In this video, you will deploy a minimalistic instance of Redis alongside a Prometheus exporter, which will extract metrics from Redis. Then we're gonna configure Prometheus to grab these metrics and save them in its time series database so that we can finally access these metrics from Grafana and visualize them in a Grafana dashboard. This video is composed of five chapters, and before we dive into any of them, I need to list the prerequisites needed to continue with this video. Number one, you should have Helm installed and set up on your machine. If not, please check out this article and then come back. Link is inside the video description. And number two, you should have Prometheus and Grafana installed in your Kubernetes cluster. If not, please check out this video and then come back. Link for that is inside the description as well. And that's it, we can start with chapter one. All right, let's get to work. I left you a link to this GitHub repo inside of the video description. Make sure that you go to it so that we can go ahead and clone this repo into whatever directory you want. I'm gonna clone it inside of desktop for convenience. All right, and there's me who's about to open Visual Studio Code, load in the folder we just downloaded. You can use whatever editor you want, doesn't really matter. Go ahead and spin up a new terminal and let's begin. All right, and if you already have Redis deployed in your Kubernetes cluster, then no need to apply these resources. But if you're simply following this Prometheus playlist, then what we're gonna do is deploy Redis using this very minimalistic setup where each resource is expected to be deployed inside of the namespace database monitoring. So kubectl, create namespace, make sure that you have this namespace created so that we can deploy all of these resources there. kubectl apply all of the resources inside of the, apply all the configurations inside of the Redis folder. Doing that in the namespace database monitoring. All right, so what this does is it creates a stateful instance of Redis that can be accessed using the following service and once accessed, authenticated using the following password. Let's clear the output and we'll say kubectl get pods dash n database monitoring. We have this Redis instance and what we wanna do is alongside this Redis instance deploy a Redis Prometheus exporter that constantly makes API calls to this Redis instance, extracts metrics from it and exposes these metrics at a particular endpoint. How are we gonna deploy an exporter? We're gonna use a Helm chart. So this Helm repository, whose link I will leave you inside the video description, make sure to copy it. This Helm repository contains many, many Prometheus exporters, one of them being the Redis exporter. So copy this link so that we can add the repo to our local Helm configuration. Uh, we can use an alias by which we can refer to the repo. We'll call the alias Prometheus Community. You can call the alias whatever you want, and it will be an alias for the following Helm repo, which we're about to add, all right. And once added, we can search this repo for Helm charts, specifically the Redis Helm chart that we're gonna use, and all right. Now, if you uh, are signed up to my Kubernetes course, if you're not, link is inside the description. Highly recommend you check it out. If you were following my Kubernetes course, then you'll know that a Helm chart streamlines the deployment of very complicated software. Because what it does is it abstracts away uh, all of the configuration files inside of a templates folder and leaves you with a values file with default values that you can configure to steer the Helm chart deployment towards one that suits your purposes. So if I go to the official Prometheus community GitHub repo that has a bunch of Helm charts, I'm gonna go down to the Helm chart that allows us to deploy a Redis exporter. All of the configuration files needed to deploy the Redis exporter are hidden away inside of the templates folder. And the only things we need to modify are the default values inside of this values.yaml file, okay? So whatever values we don't wanna touch, we don't touch, and the values we wanna customize, we're gonna do right over here inside of this exporter values.yaml file. 
So first things first, when the Redis exporter is deployed, it needs to be configured such that it can connect to the right Redis address, the Redis address that will lead it to connect to the following Redis instance. Now this Redis instance can be accessed through the following Redis cluster IP service. So the host in this case is not my Redis, it's Redis. All right, but we're not done specifying the host just yet because in case the Redis exporter is deployed in a different namespace than the Redis instance itself, then we'll need to specify the namespace that the Redis service is in. All right. And to finalize our host, we use the Kubernetes suffix service.cluster.local as you learned in the Kubernetes course. And this host will allow the Redis exporter to find the Redis service and the port will tell it where the Redis service is serving requests. And upon connecting, to the Redis instance through the Redis service, Redis is going to require it to authenticate using the following Redis password. Now, to my knowledge, Redis by default only requires a password. The username is optional, and I think that was added in Redis 6.0. But anyways, we need to um, we need to give the exporter the following password in order for it to authenticate to Redis once it's been connected to it. So what value will we have to modify in the values.yaml file? Let's look through it. Um, is there a section for authentication? So, so that's the thing with deploying Helm charts. You want to leave the values that aren't relevant to you and only modify the values that need to be modified. And there you go, authentication. We need to enable that so that it's true. And we can use a secret in order to reference the Redis password. That's pretty much it. We'll set that to true. The secret, we can say kubectl get secret dash n uh, database monitoring. The secret is called Redis secret in accordance to this YAML. And the key that maps to the password is Redis password. You can also obtain this by saying get secret dash O YAML, output the YAML from which this resource was deployed, and you'll get the same thing as what we have over here. Anyways, doesn't really matter. So now the Redis exporter has what it needs in order to find the Redis service. And once the service connects it to the Redis instance, it has the credentials it needs to authenticate. Um, I think we're ready to deploy our exporter. So now we'll clear the output and we're going to say Helm install. We're going to install a Redis exporter. And this Helm release will be based on the following Helm chart. All right. Uh, the exporter is going to be deployed not just with these default values, but with the values that we modified inside of the following file. So dash F Redis exporter slash Redis exporter values dot YAML. Okay. And we're going to deploy it inside the same namespace as uh, our current Redis instance. So database monitoring which means we didn't need to specify the complete fully qualified host. We could have just done this in this case because they're in the same namespace, but doesn't harm to make this configuration more flexible. And what else do I need to add? I think that should be it. All right, now we'll say kubectl get pods dash n database monitoring. We should now have two pods one pod is the Redis instance. The other pod is the one that connected to this Redis instance through the cluster IP service at the particular port, authenticated 
to it and is now probably constantly making API calls to Redis, extracting metrics out of it and exposing all of these metrics at its own endpoint. So how do, how, how do we access the metrics that the Redis exporter is currently extracting? Well, to access the exporter, we need to do it through its own service. So kubectl get service dash n database monitoring. Uh, we want to access it through the following service. So kubectl port forward will port forward this service's cluster IP port to a local machine port. So we'll do the port mapping right over here. Um, we need to specify the namespace that the service is in. And we'll run this port forward in the background using the ampersand. All right. So is this exporter actually pulling metric data? Let's find out. Localhost 9121. 9121. This is the home page for the Redis exporter. And this is where it exposes all of the metrics that it's scraping from the Redis instance. All right, and we have all of these Redis metrics, which means our exporter was able to successfully grab, consistently make API calls to this instance and grab metrics from it. It's doing that in real time. Now we have all of these Redis metrics. How do we save them inside of the Prometheus database? So if you were following, following along in this playlist, you'll know that I have Prometheus deployed in the monitoring namespace alongside Grafana. And in order to save all of these metrics to the Prometheus database, I need to configure Prometheus to find this metrics endpoint. And we can do that through a service monitor. Do we need to deploy our own service monitor? Let's find out. Does the Prometheus Redis exporter Helm chart contain a service monitor YAML? Yes, it does. And we can steer the creation of this service monitor by modifying values inside of the values.yaml file. So we can go to the service monitor section, which um, is right over here modify what we need to modify inside of our redis exporter values.yaml file so we need to enable its creation that's really important we'll set that to true and the only other thing we really need to do is add an additional label we need to set a label for the service monitor of release prometheus all right, this label is going to be sent over to the service monitor YAML. It's going to give it the following label. The reason we're doing that is because I deployed Prometheus using the Cube Prometheus stack, and it's configured to discover service monitors that have the label release Prometheus. Now, if you didn't deploy Prometheus using the Cube Prometheus stack, then chances are you won't even need this label. But anyway, uh, now we can upgrade our Helm release to use these new values because now this will enable the creation of a service monitor. So let's clear the output and we'll say Helm upgrade. I believe the Helm release was called Redis exporter, which we created based on the following Helm chart dash F. Uh, the upgrade will occur based on the values, the updated values inside of Redis exporter values .yaml. And we'll make sure to perform the upgrade inside of the same namespace. All right. So now not only do we have Redis connected, uh, not only do we have the Redis exporter connected to our Redis instance, we should also have a service monitor inside of the same namespace. So get service monitor monitor dash and database monitoring. All right, and this service monitor is gonna get discovered by Prometheus, and it's gonna configure Prometheus to discover all the metrics being exposed by this exporter, which means Prometheus is now gonna be constantly pulling this data every 30 seconds, saving it into its own database. How do we confirm this? Well, I've got Prometheus deployed inside of the namespace monitoring, 
which means it should also have a corresponding service at which it can be accessed. So kubectl get service dash n monitoring. You probably have Prometheus deployed in the same namespace as well. That's uh, the monitoring namespace is pretty standard. If you're using OpenShift, it's OpenShift monitoring. But anyways, let me clear the output and run this again. We want to access Prometheus, make sure the data is being saved there. So kubectl port forward um, service slash Prometheus operated. Uh, the Prometheus UI can be accessed at the cluster IP port 9090, which we can map to a local machine port 9090. Um, Got to specify the namespace. Sorry, the namespace that the service is in is monitoring followed by an ampersand so that this runs in the background so that it doesn't stop. Localhost 9090. In the Prometheus UI, if I paste in any of these metrics, let me try one that's in more intuitive. Uh, Redis up. If I paste this in, I get a value, meaning that all this data is being saved into Prometheus. Now, uh, because I deployed Prometheus using the Q Prometheus stack, I've also got Grafana. And uh, Grafana is uh, is connected to this Prometheus data source. So if I deploy this Grafana dashboard inside the same namespace as Grafana itself, Grafana is going to be able to detect that this is a Grafana dashboard because of this label and import it. And I should be able to see data inside of this dashboard. Uh, so let's try it out. So kubectl apply dash f in the following Grafana dashboard inside of the same namespace as where Grafana is in. And now we can port forward the service that allows us to access the Grafana UI. So we'll say kubectl port forward uh, service slash Prometheus Grafana. Uh, we'll use the local machine port 3000 to map where it's exposed at this internal port dash n monitoring. We'll run that in the background as well. All right. All right, localhost 3000. We should see a dashboard for Redis. Redis dashboard, beautiful. The fact that we see data means all the queries being made in this Grafana dashboard are being made to the Prometheus database that has all of this metric data, and we can visualize all of that data in this very nice and beautiful dashboard. So by following this tutorial, not only do you now know how to configure a Redis exporter to connect to a Redis instance and scrape metric data from it, you also get this Grafana dashboard for free. And now before we finalize this video, what I want to do is perform a final cleanup. You know, just in case you were watching this video for tutorial purposes, you don't want all this stuff running in the background. So we'll start by killing off all the processes we have. So kill percent one to kill the first process within this current terminal session. All right, we'll say kill percent two. That kills the Prometheus port forward, kill percent three. Okay, now we'll helm uninstall the Redis exporter release that was deployed in the namespace database monitoring. Now we'll kubectl uh, delete all of the resources that were created from the files in this folder. Dash n database monitoring. kubectl delete the resource that was created from the file in this folder, dash n monitoring, that'll delete the dashboard. If you want to remove the Helm, uh, the Prometheus community from your Helm config, you can do that as well. And then we can end things off by deleting the namespace database monitoring, which will delete the namespace and pretty much everything inside of it if we happen to miss something and we are done. All right, this is the final video in the Prometheus series. If you enjoyed this series, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, because we're going to be releasing a lot more DevOps content. If there is a video in this series that you missed, go back, check out the playlist, see what videos may be appealing to you. You might pick up a thing or two.
And all right, uh, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.